Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in and down, sad and stuff! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. I am your host, Truth Seeker, back with another exciting episode where we discuss all things spiritual. Buckle up. It's going to be a good one. Today, we're going to be speaking about forgiveness. Wow. Story of my life. It's going to be good. I love approaching uh, all of these subjects, really, from different perspectives. And I feel like everybody has a piece of the puzzle and being able to bring our pieces together and it formulates a picture. So I'm excited about this podcast, excited about to talking about forgiveness, right? So uh, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been supporting my work, my podcast, my music. Uh, through the vehicle of Patreon. This is a listener-funded show, and I would not be able to do this without your help. So thank you, everyone who's been supporting uh, from the beginning, ever since I stepped out in faith to do this. Um, And thank you to all the new people who have just come on. Shout out to uh, Justin um, Taylor and his wife, who are actually about to get married, and they're flying me out to Denver to perform their wedding and literally he was one of the first patrons probably three four years back and he's been riding ever since so shout out to you brother and uh, everybody else who's been supporting um so if you'd like to support head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker there you get access to my entire discography of music it's like 200 plus songs you get access to uh some of the behind the scenes stuff extra podcast interviews you're notified on all that cool stuff and um You also get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystics, which is the community aspect to what we're building here on the podcast in our community. I think we have one of the best spiritual communities out there, and uh, we have a lot of people who are going to be forerunners in this movement who have a lot to bring to the table, and we all hang out and meet on Thursday nights via the School of the Mystics. So check that out. You get access to that. Uh, Give a quick shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to... Uh, Stasha Erickson, shout out to you, my friend. Thank you for coming on. Um, Sam VA, shout out to Sam. Thank you. And Jordan Lowe, shout out to you, Jordan. Jordan's going to uh, reach out to me really soon to do a, a feature. He wants me to be featured on a song. I haven't done any music in a while, so that'd be fun. So shout out to you guys. Thank you for believing in the work and partnering with me via Patreon. Patreon.com backslash True Seeker. Um, also, I guess just some quick updates really quick. We do have our um, men's retreat coming up in January. That one's already booked, and we've had like a crazy outpouring of uh, interest and in people who wanted to be a part of that. So uh, I went ahead and booked another one for uh, April. So we're booking for our April date now. So if you're interested in that, just go to truthseeker.com. The info is there. Uh, tickets are available. It's an overnight stay, uh, a spiritual journey in the wilderness and uh, go lay down some things and really tackle 2020 
head on. 2020 is going to be good. So check it out, truestinger.com. Um, also, my new book is here. It's doing really well. Thank you guys for all the support. Um, Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God. If you haven't gotten a chance to pick it up, definitely check it out. You can get it on Amazon or my website. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring into today's guests and uh, get started on this beautiful podcast and conversation. My friend, Anna Holub. Did I pronounce your name right, my friend? You did. Thank you so much, Truth. Oh, man. Thanks for coming on, hanging out with me. Excited to have you here. And again, talking about forgiveness. There's so many different places we can go, and I want to explore a lot of them. So again, welcome to the show. Um, before we get started and just dive right in, just kind of give people just a little bit of background about who you are and what you bring to the table. Sure. Well, thanks a lot. I just want to say I, I'm dealing with a um, power outage, so hope that you can see my face okay, and really great to be here. Um, I have been working with expanded what I call ecstatic forgiveness for quite a while now, just really diving in myself, in my own life. Of course, that's the place to start. And then um, doing a lot of peace education with different kinds of people for years. And after a while, I got so deep into it. And I found that the best, the best way to peace that I could find through all of my studies, which includes a master's degree in dispute resolution, is this expanded form of forgiveness because it's a way in which we can lay down our burdens of all our past history and really, really surrender to the most high and then receive the blessings and the, um, the teachings, right? So it's actually a very simple concept. The thing that's not so obvious is how do we do that right so i wrote a book it's um it's right here it's called forgive and be free and it's also on audible and i've done some uh, online courses to help people especially with um coming out of any kind of addiction be it substance abuse or behavioral or even subtle addictions to um, see how this per forgiveness process can really help us to come into truth, come into love, come into mercy. Um, very deep, deep divine love, which is what's going to save us and which does give us life and breath in every moment. So it's a way of tapping in to, um, to an awakening process. Wow, that's awesome. So what does that mean? Go, go into a little bit more um, detail about ecstatic forgiveness. I love that word. We use it a lot. But what does that mean when, when you say ecstatic forgiveness? Well, I talk about ecstasy as um, the ex direct experience we have when, when we're able to lay down and let go and really release the past history, the traumas, the fears that we've had. And what happens is Forgiveness I see as a doorway. It's a doorway from the uh, confusion of the world in its duality. And we get born here and we just go, oh my God, what is this place? And some of it's really fantastic. Some of it's really, really horrendous. And so we need to find our way through that um, confusion and, and um, tension. Right. So forgiveness is the doorway through that into the light of the oneness. And we absolutely have to learn how to walk through this door. Otherwise, we we won't have the kind of freedom that we want to experience. What is uh, what, what are some of the different ways that people find forgiveness? Uh, for me, what it was definitely through um coming through the the avenue of the Christian church and coming into Jesus and Jesus really represents love and forgiveness. Like he's love and forgiveness that became a person and walked amongst men. And uh, he says, he's like, he, he says some really interesting things. Like I am the way to the father. No man can come to God, but by me. And so a lot of people trying to like formulate like uh, dogmas and stipulations. Like that means you have to come to our church. That means you have to do things the way that we do it. Or you have to even say his name. You have to, you have to say Jesus. If you don't, you're not coming to God. But Jesus embodied love and forgiveness. And he says, look, like the only way for you to really get to God is through love and forgiveness. I believe that's what he was saying. 
um, wh- what are some of the different ways that, that people uh, obtain forgiveness? Because there's people listening who are on both sides. Like they're on the Christian path and they're like, yep, Jesus was, was forgave me of my sins and that gave me the power to forgive others. And But then there's people who have no idea what I'm talking about when I mention that. What are some of the different ways that we are able to walk in forgiveness in our own lives? Well, thank you for bringing up Jesus. Um, For me personally, I came out of a secular Jewish upbringing. And then I did a whole bunch of uh, research and deep inner exploration for a bunch of different paths around the world. And the thing that has been the most important spiritual connection for me has been to the master Jesus. And I feel like he guides all of this forgiveness work that I do. However, I will say that I am outside of a normal Christian church and I retain my love of Judaism, although I'm a universalist at heart. So my connection with Jesus is even as, um, you know, you know, he's from my tribe originally. (laughs) However, he's way beyond anybody's tribe. And so are we all. So I don't want to get stuck in any tribalism because that's that's not where this is at. This is like a universal depth that we can go to together. And I agree with you that that Jesus is is the guide for this forgiveness path. But that doesn't mean you have to even have a connection with Jesus to get on it, because frankly, I don't think he cares and I don't think it matters um, whether we have a personage in our minds about be it Buddha or Jesus or no one or an angel or whatever works for you, just go into this depth of release and mercy. The, mm-hmm. the word mercy really is um, coming up for me a lot right in this moment, and it does in general. And I will say that there's been many years of my life where I didn't even contemplate what, what even that could mean. And so what it, what it means, I, I hope that people will just take a moment to meditate on this word mercy. Um, and if you're part of a Christian church, great. If you're not, fine. It doesn't matter. We are all these beautiful beings of light who are here to learn and to go deeper and deeper into this thread of life itself. So that being the case, what is what does mercy mean we have to get deep enough within ourselves that we would trust that there could be something that is so loving and kind that we could walk through this doorway of forgiveness and have a place to come out the other side right it takes a lot of trust to think all right can i can i lay down all this angst all these terrors, all this anger, you know, whatever it might be that we have from past experiences and say, all right, I, I'm, I just really need another way. I need to live without all this baggage. How am I going to do it? So the trust that there's something on the other side of forgiveness is this massive amount of divine love. That's very hard for our minds to, to grok really. Yeah. Um, I want to explore the uh, ecstatic word a little bit more and like what happens um, when, when when somebody runs into the, this freedom. So for us, it's like we, we do it through spiritual practice, through like deep levels of prayer and, and, and ecstatic ecstasy with spiritual encounter with God. Like when you're in this place of like of of just pure freedom like you can literally feel it flowing from the creator it's been there the whole time maybe there's been some things that are that's been blocking it like at least your perception of it and once those things are out the way you understand that this freedom flows freely from the the throne of grace to to everyone um so for us there's it's with a lot of times it comes out through these spiritual experiences and there's trembling there's shaking there's crying you know and all these kind of things and we 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 use the word ecstatic with that these ecstatic heavenly supernatural experiences very emotional you know it, does that come into play when when you work with people and they they release the baggage and they find healing to these areas that have you know healing to the little kid within them who's just wanting to belong and needing forgiveness and things like that 
Yes, that's what happens when we're willing to release, be it, you know, through deep amount of prayer. I always start every session that I do with prayer. I need to start that way. I feel like it's the, the best way to deeply go into a, a desire for direct contact, mm -hmm. right, with, with the Holy One. So um, whatever that means for people, I'm really open for whatever language works for you, yeah. except that we really want to go through um, a commitment to the, the grace of God so that that we know that that's what's healing us i'm i never call myself a healer because i know who the healer is yeah i am a guide so i help people and yes there can be tears there can be deep um sobbing or not you know mm -hmm. it, it's it's like the picture can look like whatever yeah but the important part is that we breathe the suffering that we've been in including whatever has has um, been like an impetus for any kind of addiction, including small ones that we might not go to rehab over, but they're still like running in our minds. So any of that, when we, when we let that go, it's basically shaking it out of our cells, our cell walls, our bones, our blood, our nervous system, our emotions, our memories, all that. It has to flow through and stuff will come up. So that's why this, when, when we go, yes, I want to feel directly the mystical, which I know you have a sense of, and it's so beautiful to connect with you on this, that when we say to ourselves, all right, I'm going to put everything else aside because this is my one priority. I want a direct connection with that, which gives me life now. When we say that, then everything that's in the way is going to bubble up and that's fine. It's beautiful. So that we have memories could come up. Um, sadness can come up, you know, real dense, scary shit can come up. That's okay. Because first we've said the prayer first. That's why we have to say a prayer first <laughs> so that we're in that sacred container so that it doesn't matter what comes up. There's all kinds of space for no matter what it is to arise so that it can be laid down. It can be offered. And wow. that makes the kind of space that we need so that healing grace can then come in and do its magic. It's hmm. beyond magic, but it's, it's blessing, right? So yeah. that's why it's ecstatic. It is. Um, it's, it's interesting you use the word it could be offered too because like I look at it uh, very similar to the way like in the Old Testament of the Bible where like the Hebrews would bring forth these offerings and these things that they were cultivating and, and things that meant a lot to them. They would lay it down as an offering to God and I kind of use the verbiage of taking all of our burdens and our fears and those things and laying it down like because we it feels comfortable it's a part of us like our fear of death our unforgiveness we have a right to be angry and a right to be offended and mad but we take it take it and lay it down at the the altar of god and the bible says that he consumes it with his fire his holy fire it's burnt up and it doesn't exist anymore and um so i, I look at it like that's something that we can lay down these painful things and stuff and it's kind of like a blessing that's something we should be daily doing as well is that something you do daily or is it a one-time thing you know like i was forgiven in 1998 and i'm good from here on out you know <laughs> all right well i'm so glad you just said that because that's exactly the wording that i use and i haven't run across that all that much um, so I'm, I'm in deep um, honoring of you and the path that we're both on, that we've been given this understanding that we're sharing with people. Um, and it seems like it's pretty identical, which is super cool to me oh, for sure. um, to, to run into it. And, and really the, the way that I have come to understand through my own direct experience, through, through also um, reading Course in Miracles, which has been a, a big uh, influence on me, is that this whole idea that everything can be an offering, everything, no matter what we find, no matter what pain has happened 
um, or even will happen in our lives, we can just keep on laying it down, keep on offering it to the altar of the Most High so that we don't have to keep recycling it around and around and around. And like you said, this doesn't happen once. As I say, it's not a one-shot deal. It's not like, oh yeah, I already did that. I'm done. That will just make you go to sleep like that. So being open, being alive, being humble before this power that gives us life, that takes being willing to be that much more honest. You know, your name is Truth Seeker, right? And it's beautiful because when we're willing to go to, all right, oh, I didn't see that part. Oh, I didn't see that part either. Oh, here's a memory I didn't even remember. Doesn't matter. Just keep on offering it, keep on laying it down, keep on creating in our minds this beauty of the altar so that there's a place to put our sorrows. People get stuck. We all get stuck if we don't know there's a place to put it down. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, we, we talk about this, like making sure we hit every part. And it's like part of the sanctification process. Like once you deal with something and if you don't cut it out all the way, if you don't get to the bottom of it, it's still there. Like, you know, if you go outside and you pull up weeds, well, if you don't get the root, that weeds, you know, give it a day or two and let some rain hit it and sun hit it, that weed is back. And it's kind of the same way with, um, you know, like looking at the symbology of the Bible and, and the allegory within our lives as far as like a lot of people would look at the Bible and say it was like there's a lot of wars and they would like go into other nations and, and there was they were commanded to like kill everyone. Don't let any don't let anyone survive. Well, these different if you look at the analogies behind it in the allegory, these other nations and these other tribes that were coming against God's people, which is Israel, which means child of God, which is all of us, these other nations that were wanting to steal their riches, they wanted to kill them, they wanted to uh, destroy their destiny and all of these type of things. And it's, an, it's a symbol and an analogy for our lives that if you, because if you look up the words, these other, the Canaanites and these other, you know what I'm saying, the Amorites, they, they have weird psychological meanings that deal with trials and tribulations within our own life and it's a symbol that you got to deal with it all and they're 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 told not to let any of them live it's because if they did then their ideology would survive they would try to corrupt the people from the inside and so it's like look you have to deal with it all don't let any of it linger within your own life all of the stuff that you need forgiveness for uh, don't hold on to any of the bitterness because there's stuff that gets done. And we're like, well, I want to hold on to this. You know, he wronged me and I deserve to be upset. I deserve to be, uh, you know, angry. And again, it, the picture of the Bible, again, going back to like Genesis six, where like there were giants in the earth and God cleansed the earth with the flood. And, but it says there were also, there was some that survived and so you would think that all the giants were, were wiped out. But then on the other side of the flood, the flood is the sea of forgetfulness. The flood is the flood of the waves of the, the ocean of, of God's mercy, just flooding our lives. Right. But on the other side, they still had to deal with more giants that existed on the other side of that initial forgiveness that we came into contact with. So it's about walking it out. You know, they had to deal with Goliath and his brothers and also other, other giants that survived the flood. So, um, when we find this, this, this forgiveness and we come into the mercy of God and it just cleanses us and everything's new, that's just the beginning. Like it's a lifestyle. It's a walking out again, the sanctification process. And, um, for me, I found tremendous healing when I like, uh, came to God and laid my burdens down at his altar and, and, and came face to face with Christ and tremendous healing changed my life forever. But then once I went through what was called a deliverance session, which is just like walking in forgiveness and sending forgiveness to these other areas of our life. Once I went through a session like that, I had no idea that there were so many character flaws and defects and things that um, I was responding to, it was coming out through relationships in my life because of, I had received for, forgiveness from God, from Christ, but I haven't t taken the next step to forgive others, to like be vigilant, like 
to forgive this this radical forgiveness as you if if you will and uh and Jesus even himself said that if you don't forgive others then you yourself will not be able to receive healing or forgiveness and so that took me to the next level of like wow I didn't know that there was that I needed to forgive my mom. I didn't know that I needed to forgive my brother, forgive myself. I received forgiveness, but now I have to be a conduit of this forgiveness. And it's a, this really what Jesus or Paul calls the, the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people back to the creator through the power of forgiveness. Yeah, it's so profound. And really, when we go deep into this, we realize that there's it looks like there's seven plus billion people on this planet, but really there's one of us. There's one of us working all this out. So when we think, oh, I need to forgive that other person for doing that awful thing. Well, guess what? If you look deep enough, you can find whatever that is inside of your own self. And that is a huge humbling. So once we realize, oh my gosh, all of this humanity that can be so, um, disturbing it's also within our one heart of humanity so even if you think oh yeah i've forgiven everything and i've let go of it all well you then move on to the military industrial complex please <laughs> you know move on to the pharmaceutical companies you know move on to just really releasing from beyond being a per, an individual person. But we start as an individual because that's where our emotions are and that's where our deep levels of, of pain are inside of ourselves. So forgiving others, really, it's not a traditional model that I work with. It's, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm gonna let bygones be bygones and it'll be okay. And I'm just gonna tell my mind to just forgive that person. Well. As far as I can see, and the reason I think why people are crying when they when they get deep into it is because we have to go down, really down into the gut, into our our most feared spots within ourselves. It takes courage. It takes trust to do this. But that said, everybody can do it. It's not something special that only certain people can do. In fact, all of us, we can learn these very, very simple ways of coming to the altar and even if you don't even know what are you talking about an altar what do you mean by that well we all know deep inside that there is a sacredness to life and we might have a lot of layers on top but every single person knows this deeply inside our soul why because we get life every moment of every breath from this place so all of us know it intimately so if you feel like you're not getting a connection, it's only because there's some layers on top. And that's not a problem because we just take off the layers and lay them down and give them away so that we can have a deeper understanding. And what happens then is there's so much compassion for ourselves and for other people. And we grow in this. It doesn't happen like all at once. The more I mean, the, the big awakening can happen all at once, but then it's not done, right? It's like, oh, there's another one. There's another layer. Oh, I didn't see that before. Like you said, oh, it could be my mother, my father, my ex-husband, my ex-wife, all of that. And it could even be the state of the planet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I had a, um, man, I remember having a, a static encounter with, with Jesus, um, where he stepped into the room and I could see him with my eyes closed and he was just pure light, beautiful, radiant light. And um, he stepped closer and closer. And as I beheld him, it just took over my entire vision to where when I had my eyes closed, it was just this, this light. But it had a, a feeling with it. It had a vibration and it felt like love and compassion. And it was so beautiful. It was so euphoric. And I felt it cleansing me and it was just a beautiful uh, experience to behold but then with that it, there was this this um this compa compassion towards humanity and how god's heart is broken for his people that have kind of gone astray or there's just the state of the planet and it's like ah oh, but it was so it was beautiful and refreshing but still gut-wrenching and i i want to heal not just you but everyone and i was able to feel that and so Again, it's like, you know, the, 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 
revelation and vision I got from from God uh, some years ago was to heal the healers, to send to to the people who like who want to be energy healers and light workers and they want to kind of help people assist in the healing of the planet and the healing of the nations. It's like, first of all, you got to do the inner work. So it was a, like a message that I got from the creator from myself. You do the inner work. Get, get your healing and then I'll send you out to heal others. And then it just, it's like this ripple effect to where like everybody is living their best life. Everybody is walking in their destiny. They're healing people. They're doing private sessions. And so there's so many people who want to do this at their core, but they don't know how. And so that's why I think that this work is so important to help people get past those things. And I found it for me, like, Again, just using the analogy of looking back at these different levels and different giants that we have to defeat in our life or different uh, mountains that we have to climb, which are, you know, it could be doubt, fear, unforgiveness, all of these things that are rooted in our life. And they're standing in the way there's a between a promised land, there's a giant there like who's kind of like standing in the way, mocking your God, mocking your destiny. And everyone else is scared to touch it. Nobody wants to to fight them. But in order for you in order for you to walk in your destiny there's some of these things you have to get out you can't take with you you can't take this unforgiveness with you in in your your ministry in your calling in your new career because you'll start lashing out on people i read the uh, i shared a facebook thing about a year ago and it came back in my feed and i seen it yesterday and it said if you don't heal the wounds uh, that that you have you you have that then you'll bleed on the pe- on people who didn't cut you, and you'll start you know treating everyone. At, you, there's like a people group. All men are pigs. All you know pastors are money hungry. You know all rich people are this. All black people are that. You have these preconceived notions that are ungodly beliefs, and they're not true. But you start seeing uh, life through this tainted, foggy lens. And it's not you're not able to see uh, to the core of a person and in, in the core of a situation and see the spirit behind it. And that's what, what we're supposed to do. We're not. The Bible says that man, man judges by outward appearance, but God judges according to the heart. He's able to see the heart and to see the child and the innocence that's there. There's a hard outer shell, but God's able to see the heart of a person. And we're supposed to have God's vision. Right. He gives us his vision um so that we can see things like he or she sees it and um and i really think that's interesting to tie back into jesus as well because if when we read the bible we read about these people who had these ailments right the woman with the issue of blood the rich young ruler you know the man with the withered hand and we hear about all these people who had these ailments and that's and we even name them that, that if we tell parables or tell the story we call them by their ailment well yeah that was the rich young ruler that was the man with the withered hand But Jesus comes along and he sees the true essence of that person where we're only seeing that they're a leper. They're the outcast of society. Don't talk to them. Don't touch them, because if you do, you'll get sick, too. And Jesus was able to see the inner person there and he was able to speak to that and bring the greatness out of them. And he's doing it through the power of forgiveness, you know? Yeah. And seeing every single being as an equal being. Every single being is an innocent child of God. And so that means seeing like with x-ray eyes past all the movie of what it seems to be going on, which is actually just like, um, it's like the holodeck, you know, on on, uh, Star Trek. I don't know if you've ever checked that out, but it's like, um, when I saw that on Star Trek years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what's happening on the planet. And so the challenge is for us to see not only other people, but ourselves as this perfection um, and, and see through all the mirage of all that other um, interesting variety. In, uh, in Course in Miracles, one of my favorite things in there, it says... Um, It says, my function is forgiveness as the light of the world. My function is forgiveness as the light of the world. So we already are the light of the world. My function here is to keep forgiving, which is, which means keep seeing the innocence, keep seeing the light in each other and do whatever it takes to let go of what's in the way of me doing that. 
Now, that's my responsibility. I have sovereignty within my own direct connection to the Most High, and whatever's in the way, it's up to me to clear it out. That's really what this doorway of forgiveness is for, so that we can rest deeply in this light, in this love, and like you said, share it with other people. But there is a, a big, I think, um, kind of a, a blockage where a lot of people are like, oh, great, I'm going to be a healer now. I'm going to go out and, and do this to other people, and it's going to be really groovy, and I'm going to get money from it, and blah, blah, blah. And that's missing the point. And the real point is that we share this light together, that there's only one of us, ultimately. It looks like there are many, many, yeah. and it's beautiful to have many, many. However, underneath all of that, there's this golden light that we are and it sh comes out and shines through all of us. So when I was, um, one of the big teachings I've had is to work, uh, work with um, at risk kids and in prison inmates and people who have really kind of gone down to the bottom of the barrel in terms of their experience, their, their childhood, and also what they have, um, done in the world. So, you know, for a number of years, I was working with men in San Quentin prison who they had all killed somebody. A lot of them had killed their domestic partner, their, their, the woman in their life. Not all of them, but a lot of them had out of a fit of anger. And there they were sitting in prison and feeling like, oh my God, I'm the lowest of the low. And it was hard for them to get out of that place. But I will tell you that I have witnessed people get out of that place and be so glorious and so amazing. And all their beauty and their gifts come out. And then it was easy to see, oh, this person isn't better or worse than me. This person is a glorious child of God. Yep. Seeing, it, seeing everyone as an extension of yourself. And um, that's kind of what the universe what god is 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 communicating um before we went live we kind of talked about just the interest in in plant medicines and, and using that for forgiveness um yeah. and, and using it for many things i think it really accompanies healing i think that they i think that they're they're embedded with healing technologies they communicate healing i wrote about it in my book my experiences uh, we went to a men's retreat in New Orleans. I want to say it was about 2014. And um, we went to a float tank center. But before that, we went and seen someone who does Reiki. So we did, did this Reiki session, me and uh, I think it was three other guys. And um, it was a beautiful session. And then while we went back to the um, float tank center and we, we partook in uh, psilocybin mushrooms and went into the float tank, and there was this huge overwhelming urge that I had that came up from within me that was communicated. I was like, I want to be a healer. Like, I want to do what this lady's doing. Like, she gets to wake up every day for a living and spend her whole eight hours, 12 hours, however long she wants to work healing people. And she's able to make a living. She's able to pay bills. And I have to wake up and go drive a truck and be gone for, you know, away from my family and all the time. So there was a disconnect of like, I want to do that. And it was just in me so bad. So when I got out, I pulled out a sheet of paper and I just began to, to write down these different revelations of like what I need to do to get there. But it was communicated to me that a healer was not something that I'm going to become. Like, I'm not going to become a healer or receive a certificate. I'm a healer, everyone. Like, a, a healer is something that I already am. Like, and it comes out through everything that we do. We It comes out through, and I was able to see this, like, like, like given a life review. Like, it comes out through prayer meetings. It comes out through um, my music. My music is just infused with so many healing mod modalities, so much so that we're doing prayers and mantras and recording it in the music and turning it down so that when people listen, it's being recited over them and things like that. And so it's, it was like, 
It's not something like our dreams and visions and what we want to become are not something outside of us that it's already something within us and we're already walking in that. The goal is just how do we bring it out and how do we manifest it? And a huge part of it through this psychedelic experience was to minister healing to myself and keep finding those ways because there's levels to it and then minister that healing and forgiveness to others. So in, in indeed, in doing that, we are healing the world we are healing the healers per se yeah yeah and it's a beautiful web of light and and life for us to be awakening together and i do have a deep connection with psychedelic plants um have been working with that on my own and um receiving from others i'm i'm not a provider of that right now um once it becomes legal, mm -hmm. then that's another story. But I do work with people before and after their plant medicine journeys to help them work through what was it that they received? Can they um, go into it in the highest frame of mind and heart? Um, and in the, in the online course that I have, which is about addiction recovery and complete healing, there is a lesson on plant medicines. Um, it's not for everyone, and it's certainly not required. However, there are certain ones, and I believe there are plants coming right out of the ground that are, you know, part of the the beauty of the goddess who who gives us life, so that we can have help at this time. Because we have to wake up fast in order to really support the earth and what the earth needs right now. So that being the case, we can't just be hanging out in our addictions for another 10 years, it's just not gonna work. So these, these plants help us to um, shed fast and get really deep revelations fast. It's very, very important to integrate them. Like you said, you came out of yours and you wrote that stuff down and then you, you leaned into it and you said yes to manifest it in your life that doesn't mean you went back and had to do 12 more psilocybin sessions i don't know how many you did but what it means is when we're sober then we take that that um revelation whatever that might be and we make it step by step happen in our lives and we need to really trust i'm doing that right now you know, with putting the, the courses out online in a big way on a global scale and it's bringing up all my stuff like oh my god you know, how do i do it and, <laughs> and i see i see how we're, i'm getting we're, we're very support. much connected there very similar path because i'm in the same oh, spot yeah. <laughs> yeah, because because you know i'm just on this, this trust walk that's yeah. like pretty intense and yeah. i just have to keep going because there's no else to go except to just keep breathing, wake up every day, have a morning practice. That's another thing that will help us integrate whatever forgiveness work that we've done. We want to integrate it so that we have every morning we wake up and we get into gratitudes and prayers and aligning our day with the most high so that it can be the most fruitful and the most glorious. And this is what the forgiveness work will do for us. If we don't do it, then we don't have the clarity to be able to listen to the intuition as it's coming in. So we'll know where we're called to be. We can be in the right place, the right time, serving as much as possible. It's beautiful because um, it's like, it's, again, I, I say the universe, God, Jesus, whatever, the plants, like everything is encoded with these healing frequencies and that's what they're trying to communicate that we are one time is an illusion it's not you know and it's already within you um and you come to a lot of these ex, uh, ex, uh understandings through whether it's plant medicine it's a huge resurgence right now uh whether it's psilocybin mushrooms ayahuasca dmt things like that done with proper set and setting and, and, and looked at as a sacrament for one, as something holy unto the Lord <laughs> and something that is, is beautiful. And it's a, it's a medicine uh, it just, you know, and, and it can be used and it can be abused. And there's a lot of people abusing it. And, I, and I'm not for that. I'm not for um, people doing that as a party drug, although some people have had breakthrough that way. But it's really like set and setting. There's a reason that when you go to the Amazon, there's a shaman there who's leading you through this kind of experience and 
moving energy and being able to kind of facilitate that experience because set and setting is key with a lot of this stuff. And I do have have friends who have uh, went with us on these spirit journeys. And I've only done a couple, really two deep ones to, to be exact. Um, and But I've had friends who've been with us and then the next week they're wanting to go back out. Let's do it again. I'm ready to go. I'm like, no way. Six months. It's going to take me a long time to I've got the vision. They've told me how to do it. My mind is blown. I touched eternity. I seen angels like I, this is going to take me a long. I, I would be a spoiled brat, which most of us are, who just want to keep having experiences over and over and over. Like how many angels do you need to talk to? How many times do you need to feel that healing rush and, and, and free your body to like like going back to the scriptures? A lot of times on one time. One angel came, one ecstatic encounter, changed their life forever. They're gone. But for us in the in the West, we're like we're spoiled, especially in the churches and charismatic realms. And, you know, I think it's a part of our daily practice of all of this stuff. Right. There is a daily practice and a daily mantra that we do. But I think that for a lot of people, it only takes one. I had a lot of friends who were kind of like kind of making fun of me or um checking me because I'm speaking out on this stuff openly and I've only done it twice. But it's like, how many do I need to do it? Five, seven? How many times do I need to to speak about it to tell you how much of an impact that it had on my life just doing it once or twice? Um, how many how many encounters with Jesus do you need before you go and start telling the world how madly in love you are with God? You know, one encounter, you know, but it's like, no, you got to have 17, you know, psilocybin adventures to uh, be able to speak on it. No, it only takes one. And just as, you know, especially coming from a Christian perspective, you know, most of my friends, they would never talk about this stuff openly because of fear of ridicule, judgment and those things. But I did it. And, um, and I reconciled the two because they, they go hand in hand, your whole Christianity, the religion or whatever, if it's not about healing, then I, and, and for love and forgiveness, then you're part of a, a, a dead, empty religion. But if it, but if it breathes in, in, in forgiveness and, and, and love and acceptance is, is, uh, etched into the, the life of your, your religion, then I'm for it. And we have, to, we've found that like, you know, I shared an article yesterday um, where Paul, uh, Paul Stammen, I think is his name, was on Joe Rogan podcast and spoke about he was doing a seminar on on mushrooms and a, a Christian man showed up who seemed to be very spiritual, very devout by his appearance, um, pulled him to the side afterwards and said that Billy Graham and some of the people in his cabinet, some of his inner circle he said that Billy Graham and them would partake in magic mushrooms as a sacrament that got them closer to Jesus. And I share, I made a snippet and shared that article. And I was like, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, surprise me seeing that Billy Graham towards the end of his life, the end of his ministry became a universalist and became one who said, look, God's grace is for the whole world. And he's got people for his namesake in who are Muslim. Some of them are Buddhist. Some of them have not even heard the name of God or they're not even spiritual. But the, he said they're part of the body of Christ. This oneness of Jesus manifested on the earth through people. And to see him come to that is like that's something you come through through psilocybin and, 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 and plant medicine encounters, right? Well, I have been going to some psychedelic conferences and talking about forgiveness because people need to know that if they're going to go through a psychedelic experience that forgiveness issues probably depending on what what substance they ingest certainly the plants will bring up some of your stuff that you need to release and let go of and it will help you but you don't need to have the plant like you were saying one or two very, very, very potent experiences that we integrate over time and we learn the lessons and we, we make sure that we're, we're leaning into it with all we've got for the rest of our lives. That is really the, the calling that, that comes with, with our daily prayer. It's not that we need to go back, oh, I need some more of that. Oh, I need some more of that. That's addictive behavior. Yeah. So we need to call it out. And I have been speaking out as well about 
my own psychedelic experiences and people are going, well, Anna, are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yes, I do. Because these things go very deep and they need to be held, like you said, with, with sacredness. Last time I did, um, and, and psilocybin has been something that's been very, um, very touching to my heart. Um, last time I, I did a, a journey, I went deep into feeling the indigenous people yeah. all around the planet that are holding the space of sacredness for the earth and going through hell to do it. And I felt so much, I started sobbing and because I felt the connection, I felt the pain of losing homeland, of having you know a mining um, industry just come and bulldoze the whole thing and shoot your family. I mean, people are going through some heavy, heavy, heavy stuff and we need to support them with all we've got because they have some wisdom and some humbleness around what the earth needs. And they've also been holding space for these plants to be sacraments, like yeah. the iboga plant from Africa, which is very, very powerful. I feel like that one in particular has forgiveness medicine. And um, yet there's not a lot of it because once it was discovered, people of the West, Western world went in there to Africa and went, oh, I'll take this and I'll take that and I'll take this. And now there's hardly any left. There's a sustainability issue that we have to really confront, which is why I feel like the psilocybin, because it's so plentiful and easy to grow, and it's also native to our lands, is is the best way to, if you want a safe psychedelic experience with the proper set and setting, um, hopefully it will be more and more legal so that we don't risk you know, being put in jail yeah. for our cognitive liberty. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is a huge subject and forgiveness is a deep part of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's a lot of studies. There's a lot of, um, um, there's a lot of things moving forward, especially like in, I think it's in, um, um, Oregon where they're, isn't that where you're Oregon? Yeah. I'm in oh, Oregon. so, di so didn't they, they just, um, uh, decriminalize psilocybin? <laughs> Well, there is a movement for 2020 to decriminalize and to make therapeutic settings for people yeah. to come to have legal like um, trip houses, but yeah. with trained people. So the people will not necessarily be therapists, but they'll be trained to sit in a, in a healthy way so that people can have a good experience. But that is um, not quite happening yet. In Oakland, they decriminalized um, plant medicines in general. Um, so, but that's only for the city of Oakland and the federal law still has, um, you know, the, the power. But th the more that people do this, the more people get on board with decriminalization and therapeutic use, mm -hmm. the, the better it will be. I'm not a very um, political person, but yesterday AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, posted a, uh, a tweet or a Facebook post and says marijuana should be legalized and drug consumption should be decriminalized. They are, these are matters of public health. So she posted that 17 hours ago. I thought that was really interesting. There's a lot of people trying to get on board with with that. I mean, the earth is crying out, you know, and if we don't if we don't heal ourselves and, and heal the earth, um, we're going to we're going to continue to see disasters and things like that. It's some, you know, she's being very patient with us, you know. Uh, the things that we're doing. So, um, we, uh, you know, there is a, a spiritual awakening and it, it is grassroots and it does help for us to have conversations like this that are not taboo or not afraid to do it again. I kind of, you know, I've been criticized by some of my friends are like, why are you talking about this stuff openly? You know, you're going to get fired from your job. You, you know, it's going to be a topic of discussion at family gatherings, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I have to talk about it because you guys aren't. 
Now, if you guys would share share about your experiences and, and help people, then it would be different. But because you guys aren't, then I have to. And I have to make sure that I'm a, a beacon of light and a beacon of hope in, in, in a way, especially for the so-called Christian community, right? That's the kind of thing that gets them mad because I'm in that community as well. And I'm talking about the beauty and power of healing. And I don't care. And I think if you're a Christian or a believer, you shouldn't care whatever vehicle forgiveness rides in on. It's, it's definitely comes through Jesus, right? You've experienced that, but it comes through many other means and, um, and people are, are, are having those encounters. And again, um, I think that is Jesus. Like, I think Jesus, I don't, you know, is Jesus the mushroom? He's, if, if he's forgiveness, he's encoded in that thing. Cause he, I, I think that he is like, forgiveness and love personified through any means however that comes that's there i am in the midst you know and uh and he is 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 riding in on that v that vehicle of of reconciliation you know what no matter how it comes and um and forgiveness is is so beautiful for us to receive in our own life if you haven't and you're listening to this there's healing there's forgiveness for you there's prayers there's hands-on healing there's renouncing and things that you can go through to do that and to break those curses over your generation you know of your family even ministering healing healing to your family you know generation you know what i'm saying your lineage and all, all that too um one thing i wanted to ask you especially going back to that do you believe in and, and have you dealt with or deal with what we would maybe call spiritual soul ties or cords of attachment uh, is that some type of terminology that you use when, when helping people walk through healing? Yes. And I will say that the way that I look at this is that no matter what has happened and no matter what pain that you have gone through, there is a way for you to be healed. And it is through this doorway of, of forgiveness and reaching to the most high for your healing. And there is help and truth. And I are, part of that team to help you so you don't have to walk through the rest of your life with all this pain there is a way out that's the biggest message and it's a joyful message and the other part is what you were talking about um uh ancestral healing um i feel like that's a really big part of what we need to do too because when this forgiveness comes up and the and the suffering comes up for healing it's not just one person it's a whole lineage of beings that are our ancestors, that are our cultural, um, you know, uh, conditioning that some of it is, is really cruel. Some of it is lovely and, and wonderful. And some of it is quite cruel and judgmental and um, sad. So we need to reach back and uplift not only our personal self, but do it on behalf of our ancestors and do it on behalf of our children and our grandchildren. Because when one of us wakes up, it ripples into all of that connection with all those beings. And some people say, oh, you have to cut the cord. For me, I don't cut cords. I don't ask people to cut anything because we're all in a web. And so what's the point of that? But what I do do is it's like an electrical cord if I have some things plugged into places that are not sacred and not holy, not good for me, I got to unplug and replug it back into myself so that I can have this direct connection through the tube of light that I am all the way from the, from the stars through me down into the earth, out through the other side of the earth and back into the stars. And when we start walking around with that kind of consciousness <laughs> then it's it's awesome we can just beam love because that's the point of why we came is to wake up to this beauty that we are and see it everywhere in every person no matter what if we can that's do awesome. that then then we can rest and we'll be at peace that's funny you said that i uh i did a um a, a guided meditation that I have for sale on my website. It's um, called the Father, uh, Father. It's, I think it's called <laughs> Father God, Mother Earth guided meditation. And so you you start out in the solar plexus. No, you start out in the heart, and then you move up through each chakra, out through the top of your head, past the ceiling, past the trees, clouds, moving up past the stars into space, and you're 
uh, embraced by your heavenly father and he says some words of encouragement to you and he lavishes his love upon you and then you go back down and the sin back into your body and you go back to the heart center and you sit there. Then you go down through the solar plexus and uh, sacral and root chakra and you go down out the bottom of the floor, the place you're sitting deep into the earth and there's sound effects and there's like rumbling through the earth. And then there's sound as insects and bugs. And I'm ex describing the things you're seeing. You come to a hollow and then you're met by the, you're, you're, you're met by the mother, mother earth there. And she does the same thing. She lavishes her love upon you. So there's a connection there again, just uh, of being grounded. Uh, that's a part of healing. That's a part of release. People aren't grounded. It comes a lot easier when you're grounded spiritually and quite literally, you know, returning back to nature, putting your feet on the ground, uh, getting back and just walking through nature, communing with the wind, the birds, like there's a whole spiritual experience in that. And again, you know, taking up for our, 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 our family tree and our lineage, you know, the Native American culture are like still, still fighting for that. And I remember when I had my awakening and it just went a lot deeper than just religion and stuff. It went a lot deeper. Um, and we, we would go to the um, the Indian powwow. I'm part uh, Creek Indian. And we go to the Indian powwow majority of, of our uh, um, years for um, Thanksgiving. And there was just one year that everything just kind of lined up right. The wind was perfect. The weather was great my studies and research were just on point and I just had this awakening there. I could feel the wind just kind of blowing throughout the whole place. And everyone that I talked to, I could see the, I could see, you know, God in them and, 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 and what they bring, whether it was someone who was selling books about plant medicine or selling sage and herbs and things like this. And it was like, there was this, uh, there was a, it was a, it was appreciation, but there was also a sadness as well, because this is like, all that we get to see is like one day a year to partake of this culture that's kind of been lost. And even those people, a lot of them go back to their regular lives and spirituality is kind of lost even for a lot of them. But it's only, you know, some of those gatekeepers and some of those elders who are just trying to pass tr the traditions down. We're talking about angelic encounters and star people and healing and how to work with fire and, uh, you know, tobacco, working with tobacco and, and using it for cleansing and sage and all of that stuff just being lost and it just took me to this whole new level of uh, appreciation. I just began to kind of weep. I was holding it in because I'm with my family and, and a big group of people. But it was just like inwardly I'm trying to hold back all these tears. But it just like called me even deeper to my roots of returning to the ancient ways, as the scripture says, and returning to the earth. So I think that returning to the essence of all of that. And then when we had our deep psilocybin encounter, we were on the Indian reservation so then it was communicated with me as well, like, hey, this is a rite of passage. All of your ancestors have been here. This They've b literally been here doing this coming of age ceremony that's been lost. And here is your com here's your rite of passage. And we're like, we don't even have a rite of passage anymore. For us in the West, like rite of passage is going to college and getting hazed and going through fraternities or something. And that's, I mean, that's just like a, a, a weird knockoff, but really this coming of age and becoming a man or you know, a woman and stepping into your divinity and making sure you can <laughs> get through a, a, an experience like that, you know, touch heaven and come back with this appreciation for life, you know, and so even all of that's been lost and fighting for that, the ridicule, it's nothing knowing the healing and everything that comes with uh, this of us standing for righteousness sake, which is what this is. And it's a beauty. And there's a lot of people waking up to it. And, uh, and the work that we're doing is, is, is very powerful. Even if it falls upon one person and they, and, it, and the seeds fall down deep and they're taking a run with it, it's worth it. Because again, just going back to like the symbol of the, um, the flower of life or the seed of life. It's a circle within a circle and they're all touching and they're all connected. And that's just like us when we, when we're, when we do private sessions and, 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 and assist in healing and, and lead people through this stuff, I get, I probably get more out of it than they do. Like to be in that energy and, and, and minister healing and minister forgiveness. It's just like coming right back and it's intoxicating. It's beautiful. And I probably feel better than them when, when the session's over. So in healing the world, you, you are indeed, indeed healing yourself as well. That's so true. 
I've been doing this for quite a while and I, I do work with people one-on-one -on -one and couples and groups and just any which way, anybody who's interested. Um, and we get healed together, you know, and I'm humbled by how much beauty and grace I get to receive as I do my thing day after day. Um, and it just strengthens me more so that I can love the earth. So um, really just finding ways every day that we can go into nature, wherever that, wherever you may be and kiss the earth, give her our love and our commitment to clean up as well. So that's where we're going right now. That's the, the, the time that we're all in right now is start focusing on the earth and start respecting the indigenous people who have some wisdom for us, start learning and being humble and just listening and, uh, and, and giving of our love to each other. It's good stuff. Yeah. Well, Anna, uh, you, you have your book is out. It says right here that you've, um, your book is forgive and be free in it's, it's now in six languages and, yeah. um, it's assisting to, uh, to, to, to do what it's created to do, to bring forth the healing of the nations and minister freedom and forgiveness. Uh, let people know where they can check that, check out that book if they want to get a copy for themselves. Right. So people can go to my website, anahalub.com. That's A-N-A-H-O-L-U-B, be like brother, dot com. There's also clearpathtopeace.com. And that's where you can get my courses, uh, especially the one about addiction recovery. So um, I hope people will check in with me. I'm on Facebook and I don't do Twitter that much, but I am on Twitter. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to say hello, I would love to talk to you. I also do a free consultation. If people want to um, do a session with me, I always feel like being able to talk to me and, and ask questions first is totally fine. So we can set up like a free 15 minute thing where we can talk and then set up your session. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Everybody yeah. make sure you check out her work and what she brings to the table. It's beautiful. Have a book product or service you'd like to promote. Yeah. Look no further. As Got a commercial that started playing. Wow. That's interesting. Well, um, yeah. So check, check out the website, Anna Um, um, and check out what she has to offer. One thing I wanted to ask you just before we go, because this is something that I've kind of just stepped into a little bit. Because for me, like when I went through my uh, healing experience with um, um, just going through deliverance is what we called it in a Christian church. It's funny because I'm finding the same modalities just called something different, called energy healing, inner healing therapy. There's even Sozo, which is a new one. Like there's just so many different names for it, but it's all the same thing. It's going back, sometimes reliving it, speaking healing, speaking forgiveness. For me, it was a big deal. I mean, we filled out sheets. I mean, we had, it was kind of cool though. Like we got to take sheets home with us and was like kind of checking these things off. What it was cool because of the sheet had so much stuff on it. It made me think about it. So it kind of brought it up. It was like, have you ever been told that you have cancer have you ever thought that this was did you have you ever thought that you were crazy you know it's just all of these kind of obscure things but it made me think about it like yeah I thought I was crazy before you know whatever the case is so it was dealing with these ungodly beliefs and kind of sending freedom there and it was a long process and there was like you know, three weeks of, uh, of counsel and stuff, even before we did it. And then when we initially went into it, it was so powerful for me and changed my life. But I will say that in that, when, when I think about those modalities and deliverance and going through family curses and that kind of stuff, um, it made me think about, um, that it takes a long time. Like this is something that's going to take. And if you want to do it, you got to commit to three weeks. And so in my head, there was this, false idea there because just recently I went to, uh, uh, I was with a friend of mine and he led me through some stuff that I was dealing with and they call it an, an ascension. And this is kind of like this new thing that Christians are doing where like you, and it's the same thing that I did, but it's like instant. There's no three weeks. That's like, Hey, let's go. Let's bring it before God. Let's see Jesus cleanse it and knock it out and defeat it. And then it's gone. And literally like 
10 minutes, it was like, oh, wow, I'm free from all of this stuff. I can feel it. It's gone. I've kind of, you know, reworked those neurotransmitters and those connect- connections and synapses in my brain, and it's gone. So what about the timing with the forgiveness like that? Something that is like looked at because it was so big and it would take three weeks to, to knock out, it, it held me back from like, hey, let's do it. I can knock this out in 10 minutes with you. You know what I'm saying? Wh- yeah. Where does timing come in that for you? Okay, so I would say that the healing itself is outside of time. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it's not about time. It's about readiness and willingness and openness and honesty. If we have all of that, we have trust, we can, like you said, make the connection, offer all of our suffering, and it is dissolved because it never was real to begin with, but it seems like it's real when we're suffering with it down on this plane of the 3D world. It seems very real. Once we give it up, we give it to the light, we realize, oh my God, I'm a light being. I, I don't even need to carry that anymore. We get the, the teachings though, so that we can say, oh, here, now I have compassion in this section of my life. Oh, compassion over here. So. It doesn't take time. The actual healing is outside of time. However, I will say that I have been very humbled by how many layers I have found in my own life. Mm-hmm. Like, so part of the, the work that's, that happens in the book that, that I also um, do in workshops and stuff is to do some of that writing and have some of that, um, like seeing it in front of you where you can start to contemplate, wow, here are the key things that I came here to wake up. And some of them are the most horrible things that ever happened, but there's always a treasure in it. There's always an awakening. And also once we get um, the, what I call the A-list, like the obvious things, like in my book, I talk about how my mother committed suicide. When I was pregnant, I was, eight and a half months pregnant with my first child. I did not help have help from the dad. I didn't have any money. I was like, it was just a huge, huge thing that happened when I was 23. Really catapulted me into my spiritual life. Now I didn't have to choose a spiritual life, but I did because that was the only way I was gonna stay sane. And fortunately I, I chose that for myself, but it still took me a long time to get through the layers of taking one off at a time, not only about that, but about a whole lot of other things too. So I think we need to be humble with really how many different things can arise and memories from our childhood and from our teen years. And, you know, we take care of the really big ones and then we, then the other ones will bubble up and that does take some time. And like I said, even if we do all of the personal ones, there's ancestral ones, there's human ones, there's planetary ones. So don't expect that, oh, I'm going to do this once and I'll be enlightened and I'll be like, I won't have anything more to work on. Do you have a few more minutes or do you have to go? I have a few more minutes. Okay. Here, this is something interesting. Um, some people I've talked to, they're kind of on this I've heard people on this kick that they we want to heal everything and everyone. Right. And I believe that these energies, even the negative energies, I believe that they are they're, they're here to assist us, you know, but we have to deal with them. We have to understand why they're here, why they're in our life, what they're trying to show us, uh, you know, to, ve- to develop character. There's an empathy that comes along with them at least now that they're gone, right? I can see that. I can't, it, it was hard to see that while they're here. I can now, a lot of times. I, when things are coming out of me because I've done enough work and I, I get familiar with this game and the song and dance, right? Uh, but there's some people who say that they, when, when they have demonic energies around them or negative energies that they want to send them healing. So someone, some people have said, and this is kind of interesting because I haven't, I'm not really into it, but they'll say like, if there's a demon around you, see how you can help it or heal it. Have you ever heard anything like that? Does that sound tricky or something that should be explored into? Like you, the demons are coming to you because they need healing as well or something. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Uh, yeah. So there's so many ways to look at this. Like what, what is really a demon anyway, <laughs> you know, like as if that's outside of my mind. 
Yeah. Is that demon outside of exactly. my mind? Is that just a, a really dense place of fear that looks outside of me, but it's actually, there's only one of us here. And you've right? given it a name. Yeah. Or a persona. And so, yeah, exactly. So, so in Course in Miracles, which has been a, a big influence on me, especially about this ecstatic, expanded forgiveness and the altar and laying it down and all that is in there. Awesome. Um, what it says in there is to not to try to bring light to the darkness, but bring the darkness to the light. Wow. And that is super deep. So yeah. I'm going to say it again. Do not try to bring lightness to the dark because in our minds, then we make that dark real and we, we say, oh, it's a thing. I got to heal it. I got to do something to it. Just bring the darkness of whatever we find our pain and suffering to the light so that it can be dissolved. It's, it's already dissolved, but we didn't realize it. So we need to like, catch up with that and offer it that's where the offering comes from that's why we need to offer because we bring all this negativity and suffering to the light for healing we don't try and zap the darkness with light because we're just saying that the darkness is real when we do that and it just helps it to stay in a in a configuration so that's kind of esoteric it's just something to ponder to meditate upon see if it makes any sense at all to you but that has been very helpful for me the other night i was camping and i was at this really beautiful campsite and all of a sudden in the middle of the night somebody just starts blasting some really satanic sounding music out just loud and I'm lying there and I want to go talk to those people. But then I realized that might not even be safe to do because who knows where those people are at. You know? It's probably me. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I'd have that response to your music and the message of that music. So anyway, it's just blasting out. And I had to decide what am I going to do with this situation? And so what I did was I came into, I just brought all of my senses into my central channel and got really sovereign with my own light so I could stay right here. And then I started to expand my light everywhere. Um, and I definitely sent blessings to the people, but I wasn't trying to heal them. I was just seeing them as perfect underneath all this crap that was on top of it. So, and I just stayed with my own light, stayed with my own light. And eventually they turned it off and it was gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Just uh, expanding your light and expanding your, your will and almost like communing with yourself. Like, Hey, I'm cause those people are a part of you and just kind of like sending them telepathically telling yourself, turn it off. You don't need this in your life. You know, yeah. just, no, just yeah. seeing yourself from not being an individual. So, you know what? Just communicate that and something happens and they turn it off. Yeah. And then they're yeah. in though, who knows what they're doing. They're probably having fun and enjoying company and all that stuff. They don't even know that they probably didn't even know that they were being a, a nuisance to the other campers or whatever's the case too. So. Yeah. And I don't, I have no idea. I mean, I feel like I just need to stay in deep respect for every being, no matter what it looks like. And those guys in San Quentin taught me that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that really goes did. that goes a long way. I think it's hand in hand with with awakening, with spirituality. Like, you have to put yourself in their shoes, you know, and that's a big part of healing. Like, of of doing the work that we're doing and showing up is like, I'm just trying to, and and I find I find my calling. I find so much um, content. I find so much uh, wisdom, even in doing these podcasts of just me speaking to the younger version of myself. Hey, man, it's going to be okay. You're going to make it. God has great things in store for you. Let that stuff go. You can't take it with you to the next level. And I'm just like, and I'm speaking to, I am speaking to myself, right? Myself that's in the same me that's in others and people who have gone, who are going through similar situations. And I get messages and emails daily from people like, man, I felt like you, you're talking directly to me. It's like, well, 
I am, you know, but it's like just, you know, being able to put ourselves in that person's shoes so that we have empathy and we want to see them healed and we want to see them walk in their best life. And we're not like wishing that they fail or hoping that they, you know, all that kind of stuff, which if you don't deal with your, your blockages, that may be something you deal with. You may get, be envious and you want people to fail and you're jealous and your jealousy leads you to have bad thoughts for people and you want to take it into your own hands and repay evil with evil. Like there's a bunch of that stuff and you have to move past it to put yourself, say, okay, well, what if that was me? And I think that, you know, we talk about the Bible again, like Jesus says that all of the law and all of the prophets and all of the stuff in the scriptures is, is, it hangs upon love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Because in doing that, walking in supreme love, you're fulfilling the perfect law of liberty and unity. Because if you really look at the embodiment of all of that stuff, and it gets deep, um, that it, it's about love. The, the kosher diet, loving your, understanding your body is a temple, loving your body and not putting bad things in your body. You know, if you love, if you love uh, your spouse, you're not going to look upon another woman with lust or you're not going to go outside of your marriage and envy another man's uh, wife because you love your wife. Like, and so all, of, even that stuff as it's like meticulous stuff that you would do, a person would do to fulfill the law of God, like it's fulfilled in walking in perfect love and that's the the beautiful thing to be able to see love in everything H how would you know we had these these uh bracelets wwjd what would jesus do and it's as simply as a reminder of like what would love do what yes. how would love respond to this i want to i want to fight you i want to I'm, I'm upset with you but how would love re respond not to be a doormat and there's people i've even read in the chat already people are saying like i can never you know f uh forgive what what happened to me um someone says here says i don't forgive bad behavior by anyone so there's a difference between forgiving and forgetting and being a doormat too can you talk yeah. to that a little bit before before we go here yes and there's a whole section on that in my book and uh really thinking these through these these fears that come up through because one of them is if I forgive, I'm going to be a doormat. I'm going to be weak. I won't be able to handle it. Next time somebody else is a total asshole to me, I won't be able to handle that. So I got to keep my armor up and don't talk to me about forgiveness. I get it. I get it. So that's why this particular process, how I do it, and I feel like how you do it as well, is a spiritual thing because we need the strength and the power of something that is bigger than our individual little self in order to be able to accept the kind of healing that's available for us and also to have trust that if and when anything happens in the future we can handle it not from a personality but by being plugged in and having all this power of the oneness to support and heal us and when we do this work which is connected to the body, by the way, you know, that we stash these pains inside of our body in different places. And if you don't take care of it, it will become a dis-ease to get your attention. Say, I'm not, you know, this thing isn't finished. So, so if we can do it now, if we choose to do it now, then we have that much more health and that much more openness. And it actually changes what happens in your life. Because when we raise our vibration. We have more and more love coursing through our body and our mind. We walk around this way. What actually comes toward us from life is different than the options that we have if we're still hanging on to these resentments and grievances. Energetically, we're walking around in a different way. But that takes trust, and I totally understand. And I write about in my book when, when it came time for me to really let go of the the pain about my mom and what she went through and what I then thought about life and how I thought life was. And here I was about to give birth and she decides life is not worth living. What kind of message that was for yeah. me. And I was really young. I mean, I had to walk through all this stuff. So I completely get it. And I would just say that if you want more 
vitality and brilliance and you want to let your brilliance out, which I think all of us do, you're going to have to drop some of these things. There's just no choice about it. You got to do this inner work. You have a choice about when you do it, but you actually have to do it if you want liberation. <laughs> That's good. And the sooner the better, right? Because why wait? Why hang out in suffering another mm -hmm. six months, another 10 years? I mean, we all know people who have come to the end of their lives and they've just never done the work yep. and they're a mess. And then they're going to pass over and they haven't gotten. So we don't want to do that. We want to do it now yeah. or as soon as, as soon as we're ready. Yeah. Right? Well, if like something really, really harsh has happened yesterday, I'm not going to ask you to forgive it today. Sometimes we need some time, Yeah. you know, That's to true. just sit. Yeah. So I never say, oh, you should forgive right now. I'm saying when you're ready, the invitation is always right now. Mm -hmm. I try to do it as fast as I can because I know that bitterness will sit in for me, you know, and yeah. mess me up. And I've had because I've, I've just learned. I just know how I am. So when people wrong me, I'm my you know, me and my wife are polar opposites when it comes to that. She'll hold a grudge. She won't, you know, and it's good because it's healthy because I'm like. I, I, I kind of I kind of become the doormat for people who just keep wronging me and abusing me and using me just because I forgive them. So she kind of helps to balance that out with me. Um, but again, just like looking at like the Israelites in the scriptures who were in the uh, in, in the wilderness and they were just had this journey that took them like uh, 40 years. That was really, if you look, you can pull up the journey on like MapQuest of where they were going. And it was only this maybe a couple of days to get there. And it took them 40 years. But if there was, le but because there were lessons that they had to learn in that, that they couldn't have learned on the other side. But the quicker you learn those lessons, right? And you just kind of like do the inner work and say, okay, God, what are you trying to say to me? Why do I keep inviting these type of people in my life? Why do I keep... Why does this situation keep coming up with different people? Is it the people or is it me? Most most of us are like, I keep running into all these friends who are just have the same. They just keep doing this. Hold on. Maybe you're inviting these people. Maybe there's something that's in your life that you have to deal with, right? So there's all of that stuff that goes on. And, and the quicker that we deal with it, the quicker we walk in healing and forgiveness. And we're able to step into that promised land, that land flowing with milk and honey, which is the land of forgiveness. That's it. Thank you for putting that so beautifully because that's the self responsibility. You know, we really are responsible for our vibration. Um, you know, a lot of us have come into some really, really tough family situations. And I would not say that the children are responsible. But once we get old enough, like I work with teens. So once we're at about 15 or so, uh, it's different for different people. But once we can take stock of our lives and start making our own choices of what we want to keep and what we want to let go of, yep. then then it's then we're on our own trajectory through life, and we are responsible for the energy we're putting out. And the and so hopefully it's loving and kind. And if it's not, <laughs> it's okay. That's just a spot where forgiveness is needed. Yep. That's all. Um, I always like to say that um, you know sometimes we have to let go of what we're holding in our hand because we can only we can only hold so much we have to lay down some stuff to uh in order for god to release what is in his hands like we can't carry anymore while we're continuing to ask for opportunities and blessings and feelings and emotions and all this because we're trying to c carry this stuff so I say that and just to kind of let sometimes you have to let go of what's good or what seems good to receive what's great and your destiny and there's stuff that we're carrying that we can't carry to those next levels and into our lives and careers and ministries and opportunities because we'll mess it up. Like I, I, I had things that happened to me and, and people lash out against me and I wanted to respond back. I wanted to use my platform to do it. I wanted mm -hmm. to do episodes and really just go in and expose them even and tell personal business because that they did that about me like on social media. And I'm like, okay, let's see who's got a bigger and part of me wanted to do that, but I recognized it. Hold on. Wait, what are you doing? No, 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 no. You can't do that. You're going to run off people who, first of all, you're going to tell people who have no idea who even this person is. You're giving them free publicity and all of that kind of stuff. And then I'm trying to, you know, respond. I have to make sure that I respond correctly because 
there's things that we're trying to take with us to these next levels that we can't. And, and I look back over, like if I would have did that, like w- what would have happened to the people who look up to me as a, a, a person of, uh, you know, of understanding a person of forgiveness and turning the other cheek and all that kind of stuff. It's like, wow, this is weird, you know? And, um, so you have, I can see it in my own life. It's like, okay, I passed the test. I didn't respond. I, I have friends that I confided in and said, look, I wanted to, this is why I wanted to, but I didn't. And, um, and, and, and even they saw that and like, yep, you did a good job because I don't know how you handled it, but you did. And you didn't, you know, you didn't, uh, you know, raise your tongue in judgment against them. You understood that they're going through some stuff and they're processing some stuff them their self. And you didn't, uh, you didn't, you know, make it harder for them to do it. And I had to be the victim of it, but it happens a lot. But, um, you know, passing the test. And not taking that stuff with you because I always like to look at Roseanne as well. I feel like Roseanne had this huge platform and, you know, this this life work and uh, her uh, career was booming and and even went back to, you know, brought her show back and it went to the number one show on ABC. And she woke up in a a drunken stupor, if you will, ambient and alcohol mixed sleep and woke up and made a tweet. That one tweet kind of like destroyed her entire platform that she was on network dropped her you know opportunities and advertisings they dropped her off of one tweet and i look at that as like we have to be protective and we have to be careful of these places that we're going because it worked you work so hard to build whether it's a, a platform or an opportunity that with one tweet you can destroy it you know i could have lashed out at these people and showed their picture and told people to stay away from them and all that kind of stuff, you know, and it's really just counterproductive to the bigger picture, you know? Mm, yeah. One of the things that Jesus says in, in the course of miracles is that we really need to walk off the battlefield altogether. And that's what forgiveness helps us to do because without it, our mind is a battlefield. And then it looks like our world is a battlefield, but the more we just say no thank you to the battle itself and lay it down and make offerings, then we get this clarity that has nothing to do with the battle. It's just a whole other thing. It's a quantum leap into something completely different. Yeah. I think that's what both of us are yeah. are sharing to the best of our ability. And yeah. and for me, I know I keep growing in this. It's not like it's over. It's not like I can check the box. Got it. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm stretching too. And I think that's great. You know, if you ever go to a teacher and they say, Oh, well, I'm totally cooked and now it's your thing, yeah. Walk away. Yep. You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I refuse to, to listen or learn from people like that. I just do. Like yeah. I, won't, I I tell people to stay away from them. Like, just like you, like get away. Like you have to be open to learn. But that's just because when we've never arrived, like we all, we're always doing that, that inner work, you know? Yeah. And there's always going to be an expanding field of love to be in. And that will expand our capacity all the time. That's how much mercy and beauty there is. And if you're not feeling that right now, that's okay. It just means something's bubbling up for your attention and for your forgiveness. Yeah. And what I've learned too, and maybe this would be a good place to, to close our, our talk, is that, and I, and I wrote, write about this in the book too, where at first it seems like we're offering all, all of our pain and sorrow. But then I realized, oh, why stop there? Offer all of the mundane things like, you know, whatever, just walking down the street, offer that, and then offer all the joy and the ecstasy as well to where our entire life is just a communication with the most high. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go. Here's, here's the reflection of your beauty back to you on the earth on all of its beautiful myriad variations. Yeah everything's an offering and and when you do that you find out you live in a place of gratitude you yeah. live there like it's you don't have to get there you live there you know and when it when you fl- when when it something changes you know that there's an a disturbance in the force and you know that you need to get back there so me i just start again when when i pray i, I always start now not however mundane it sounds i start with my breath i'm just thankful for for my breath i'm thankful for my heartbeat and i just move out to the different places in my life that i'm that i'm thankful for and i'm still here and uh and and i think doing that 
um, allows us to live in a place of gratitude, which is where all the miracles and things come from. The attitude of gratitude. Your and, and your your attitude determines your altitude, how far you're you're gonna go spiritually and 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 living your best life. And that's what it's about. So, Anna, thanks again for this conversation. I really enjoyed it. Let me know anytime you want to come back on. We I love this conversation. We can just keep going. But thanks so much for hanging out with me. And uh, it's it's so awesome. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Truth. I really did too. And um, I I really appreciate your ministry. And I hope that everybody that's listening has a beautiful, grace-filled day. Awesome. Give your website one more time. Sure. It's anahalub.com, A-N-A-H-O-L-U-B. You can also go to clearpathtopeace.com. And her book is Forgive and Be Free. Make sure you guys go pick that up, support what she's got going on. Thank you so much, my friend. We'll do it again. All right. Thank you. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. Namaste. <laughs> All right. Anna Hollum, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed it. Radical forgiveness. It's good stuff. Give me one second because this outro is about to play. Sorry. Have a book, product, or service. You- we'll play that in it when we're done. We're not done yet. She was talking about the battle. The battle rages, right? There's this battle over your soul. There's a battle for the hearts and minds of men. Now, there is a battle, right? It's definitely a spiritual warfare. Part of the warfare uh, is the battle. But understand that like you can you can withdraw yourself from the battle just because it's not that you, you, you're not vigilant, you're not like doing warfare or whatever, but understanding that the scripture says that the battle is not mine, but the battle belongs to the Lord. It's his battle. He fights our battles for us, right? And it also says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's a big one because I've got some ways and some things that I I feel like retribution should be paid. We got to show these people a lesson. We got to give these people a part of our mind, right? But I can show you better than I can tell you with the fact that I've withdrawn myself from your isms and schisms. There's people, and you got to learn this, man. You, you, you. You let people pull you out your character, pull you out of your uh, your peace with any comment, with any jab. Man, you I did, that's what they are. It's a battle. They're taking jabs at you. Like it's literally like a UFC fight. They're taking jabs at you or a boxing match and you're responding back. These people who are punching up because they're trying to pull you out of your character, they're sharing posts and doing slyway messages on social media because they seen that you said something. So they're like responding like a, what we call a sneak diss. We call it a sneak diss in hip hop where you take little shots at people, but you're not, but you're vague about it. <laughs> they're vague. And, uh, and you let people pull you out of your piece, out of your character. Not, not just people, people's one thing, because the, the scripture says that we that the battle is not even with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities and heavy, heavenly places. You're not fighting against people. Like a person is not your enemy. What they're going through is your enemy. The person is not your enemy. So there's a different way that we fight the battle. We don't attack the person, but we recognize the spirit that they're operating in. And it's whether it's the spirit of offense whether it's a a spirit of Jezebel, like there's so many different spirits that people are operating in and it's trying to distort your dreams, your visions, pull you out of your character so that it can entail, let people know that, hey, see, they're not who they say they were. They said they were spiritual, but this. They said that they were healed, but this. And it should be a good indicator when you feel yourself being pulled out of character. It's good because you feel it. Oh, I need some more work there. I do it all the time. It's an inward reflection. It's a daily walk and communion with God and with self minister and healing. Um, So that if you feel yourself being pulled out, like uh, for me, it's like those people who have wronged me and who've kind of went on social media and public platforms and like, you know, said little weird things about me and and sometimes not even mention my name, but just sneak this, take little jabs. Um, When I get upset, or I want to lash out, or I want to respond negatively, I feel I catch myself. It's okay. 
there's still some healing that needs to be done. Or when their name is mentioned and I get upset, I was like, hold on. Let me respond. And, I, and I'll draw away. I'll bless them. I'll just pray and release them. You know, sometimes you got to do that more than once. Sometimes it's not just a one-time thing. Well, yep, I did it. I, I gave it to God. I, you you got to keep giving it to God. Every time it comes up, every time it starts pulling you out of your character, just bless them. The Bible says to pray for those who have wronged you. Pray for those who have persecuted you. Pray for those, you know, because in doing so, you, you're pouring hot coals upon their head because they know what they're doing. That spirit that's within them knows what it's doing. They're just weak and they're being used by a foreign spirit. Look, some of those spirits, you you rebuke other spirits. You just drowned out. Don't even respond. Respond. Well, if you do respond, respond with love. Pray for them, man. Pray for them. Speak blessings and peace upon them that they'll come to it. And you'll find out that almost every time those people come to you and repent. They come to you and ask for forgiveness. They come to you and say, look, man, I was wrong about you. I'm sorry I spoke out of character. I'm sorry I, 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 uh, I slandered your name. I'm sorry that I said this about you. And sometimes the stuff you don't know about. But if they're doing the inner work, which a lot of us are, they'll, they'll, they'll have a conviction there. Trust me, I, my, my pastor came to me. Sometimes it hurts. Maybe sometimes they should just keep it to themselves, though, but even because you because they like confess the stuff you didn't even know about. So it brings up something to you. Like one of my old pastors came to me. I went to a meeting and he was there and he come up to me and say, hey, hey, truth. I just want to tell you, man, I ask you to forgive me, man. I've been slandering you. I've been, you know, getting caught up in gossip about you, man. And uh Hey, it's all good, bro. Praise be to God. <laughs> you know, I'll forgive you, man. It's all love, you know. But it's like, hold on, I didn't I didn't know you, you were talking. You say, what about me? You're one to talk. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hold on. But you got to be ready for that because people are going to do it. I'm telling you, like people have come out of the woodwork to apologize for slander and for false accusations and stuff, especially in the church. Church folks are known for gossiping. That's what they do. So if you're in a church realm and you're coming out of church hurt and bitterness, you've been talked about. They're talking about you regardless. So a lot of you guys are just kind of like held back in your dreams and and who you really are because you don't you don't want people to slander you. You don't want people to talk about you. If I tell you how I really feel, you're going to make fun of me. You're probably going to excommunicate me, all of these things. But you need to understand that they're talking about you anyway. They're talking about you anyway anyway whether you do or don't that gossiping it's what they do so if you're in these little circles and stuff man look live your best life man and and do what god has called you to do like now like don't wait just go ahead and step out and do it you know if you live for their acceptance you're gonna die by their rejection it's just part of it uh my buddy watchman i would say his name he was going to a church and uh, him and, and Stephen, the voice cook, uh, they were going to a church and they were like, truth, man, you need to come to church with us, man. It's a good church, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man, I ain't like, I just ain't trying to come to your church, man. I'm sorry. Like, I understand that you guys are having a good time, but uh, it's like, I'm not against it, but I just, I just don't feel the need to go right now. You know, I want to honor y'all if that's something I really believe in to come check it out. But they were like, uh, nah, man, it's something, something, something got you not wanting to go to church. It's like, no, nah, like, I kind of like want to go to church, but I don't want to deal with all the stuff. I said, first of all, I was talking to Watchman, and uh, he was uh, he was we were working on his album, The Ascension. So Watchman put out an uh, album called The Ascension, and it talks about astral projection, leaving your body, angelic encounters, communing with aliens. There may have been some psilocybin talk in there, plant medicine talk. It's talking about UFOs and all of this kind of crazy stuff. I said, bro, you're going to a church. That if you let them know that you're working on this album, it is O-W-H-H. What does that mean? Off with his head. You are done. If they find out that you shared an article about your new album coming out and you're talking about this stuff and you're going to that church, you're through. You are dead to them. It's over. So you have to like be a hypocrite and act like you're not into certain things or not talk about it around those people. Like I get that. You don't have to go around like forcing your opinions and talking about aliens with everybody or talking about plant medicines with whoever's around. Like I know like there's some people like when I was working like 
I can only talk to them about football. I go to work, yeah, or we talk about the weather. Like, I don't give a damn about the weather, but I know that's the only thing I can talk to you about. But I have to talk to you about the weather. I have to talk to you about football because I can't talk to you about aliens and plant medicine and the healing of the nations and all that, you know, kind of stuff. But some people can't hold it in. They get fired from every job. They just getting into it with people. But you have to play the hypocrite around those people. That's not like I'm not for that, whether especially if a church, you have the freedom to, to like not go there. I could see at work. That's one thing. But at church and for your spiritual life and spiritual growth, like if they found out who you really are, you would be done. And that was the crazy thing for me of like stepping into who I really am was the fact that because I knew that was true with the church, part of me thought that that was true with God. Like if God really seen who I who I am and what I'm into and what I like. It'd be off with my head. He would destroy me. But then the grace and forgiveness steps in and say, no, I know everything about you. I know every hair of on your head. I have them numbered and I know how many hairs are there or lack of. He says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew where you would be. I knew what you would be. I, I, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And those things are in you for a reason. And even the things you're working through that are not beautiful. He's like, I knew that. And you know what? Freedom and, and love steps in and forgiveness says, and I still love you. I know your flaws and I still love you. Jesus steps in. I see your withered hand. I still love you. I see you're a leper. You're an outcast of the community. They've given up on you. I haven't. I still love you. I've got a job for you. I need you to go back and tell the other le lepers that there is forgiveness. You're going to reach a people that those other people can't reach because I see the greatness inside of you. And that's Jesus speaking to us. We are the lepers. We are the outcasts from society. You are the leftovers. You are the one that everybody else has looked over. Like that's you. I don't have leprosy. That's a disease. No, spiritually, you're a leper. You don't fit in nowhere. You get kicked out everywhere. You're trying to find your place in life and you can't find it. You're the outcast of society. That's a, It's not everybody, but it's a lot of y'all here. Trust me, I know y'all. I know you. We have a community. You know, <laughs> but God has strategically placed you in a season and in a place where he can most effectively use you, whether it's a time to sit back and, and do your own inner work so he can raise you up in order to send you out. But God is the author and the finisher of our faith, and he knows what he's doing, even when we can't see it. He's working it together for our good, even though the things that the enemy has meant for your harm, God is going to in turn use it for your good. And you're, he'll use your setback as a slingshot into your destiny, whether it's the loss of a, a job, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whatever it is. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. We can't always see it, but I love sitting in hindsight. I see what you did there, God. I see what you did there. Synchronicities, moving things, shifting things so that it lines up for your good. He has to do that. He has to like. It's almost like, you know, if you ever watch on TV or cartoons where like someone would pause the scene and move things around and then push play and, and stuff would just pop up. And that's what God does. There's no such thing as time He's able to send synchronicities, open up doors, make people call you, you know, all types of crazy stuff. He makes you go to the laundry mat when you are looking for a job and, and you help you offer to pay for somebody's uh you're washing their clothes or get them changed or whatever and then you walk and you fell into a job that's paying you really good because you showed up there and you stepped out in faith like god has a way of working this stuff together for your good i can't script it better like there's a way that seems right to me but in the end it's destruction so i was like god let's i'm going to work with you now my way always messes up so but he gives us the desires of our hearts. There's you know, He still works with us, like these feelings and desires. The thing is, he renews them. How? Through that fire from the altar. The fire of God will renew your mind. It will renew your thoughts, your will, and emotions. It's the fire of God. The more that you bring. So now we're doing the inner work. What else can I bring? What else can I bring to the altar? My hatred? Yeah. 
my bigotry, yeah, take it, God. My successes, you take, it's not just bad stuff, you take good stuff. My glory, my calling, let me lay that down. And then we find out there's some things where like, no, 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 I can't lay that down. And see, that's the thing he really wants to lay that down. And all, it's all about surrender and trust is all it is. And he purifies it with the fire and gives it back to you. And when the fire hits it, it's like how gold is purified and we're made as the, the purest and finest of gold. But gold has a lot of impurities in it. it has a lot of different metals and it's mixed. There's a mixture but when the fire hits it and it's refined in the refiner's fire, quite literally and spiritually, that all the impurities come up to the top. So all of the other stuff that's mixed in it, whether it's iron or brass or whatever's mixed in with the gold, it's going to come up to the surface. And then you, in, in the end, you're going to have pure gold, the finest of gold. And spiritually, that's what happens to us. We go through the fire. There's a baptism of fire that we receive from God. It's in the Bible. It's the anointing. It's being able to carry the anointing. It's being able to continually walk at a level of purity and excellence that you couldn't have walked out 10 years ago because you had bitter, you had hatred and hatred and you, and you were quite frankly prejudiced against a lot of different people groups other than you. You only hung around the people who look like you, who talk like you, act like you. Getting all of that stuff out of you is part of the process and we welcome it. It's not always fun. It's usually never fun. But again, it becomes like a game and we're like, okay, what else do I have? I'm digging. I want it. And when you feel that resistance there, you know that that's something big. Give it to God. It, and a lot of times it's dreams. It's visions for your life. It's ministry. Whatever it is, you just lay it down. And I'm telling you, he purifies it. It may take a day, it may take a week, it may take three years. I don't know, but he usually gives it right back. He didn't put these dreams in you to taunt you, to hold it over your head like a donkey uh, following a carrot to lead you and guide you, only just to have it right outside of your reach, right outside of your grasp. It feels that way, but it's because you have something in the way. It's not because God's doing it and dangling in front of you. You got to give up your racism. I know racist Christians. Yes, I do. A lot of them. I know bigoted Christians. I know envious Christians. I know Christians with character flaws. I mean, I have my own stuff, but I work through it and I give it to the Father and it's a daily sacrifice. Look, and some stuff, he just takes it and it never returns. Some stuff, it's a daily thing. It's a daily surrender. It's an ego thing. Look, daily, I give this to you. Daily, I die. Daily, I lay myself down at the altar of God. Take this stuff in me because I know it's bad. And then therefore, in doing that, you begin to walk in the spirit. Because you're you're aware, you're just you have spiritual practice. You're walking in the spirit and you, you're able to see these things. You get better at it. You get better at it. You become more conscious and aware of it. Like once you like fight certain demons or you know, deal with certain battles or see certain mountains, they kind of get familiar and you learn how to mountain climb. And like, if I can climb that mountain, I can climb these little mountains, you know, and you see that these mountains are really just a molehill. It's part of it. The inner work, the sanctification process. He knows what he's doing. He could do it. Just let him do it. Give it up. It'll get here a lot quicker. You're prolonging your dream. You're prolonging your calling because you're trying to hold on to the stuff or you're trying to do it yourself or you're waiting. You're waiting because it's familiar. Let it go. It works through forgiveness, forgiving people like that. Hey, man, forgive you. Just want you to know, like, I didn't know what was going on in that guy's heart. That pastor, he hit me up and not just him. I'll tell you so many more people. It's kind of weird. It's ridiculous how many people have come to me and repented because of gossip and slander and backbiting. But they know there's a conviction there that they, they have to get rid of it because they're holding it. Now, they can just say, Father God, I ask you to. But sometimes it'll never leave until they step out, until they step out and go to that person in forgiveness. Um, there's a lot of scrutiny towards like the 12-step program in, in the church um, because a lot of different scrutiny of like, you don't need 12 steps, you need one step. One step towards Jesus. 
But I have some friends who were in the 12 step program and I've been able to look at it with fresh eyes through the, the lens of healing and through the, the lens of, of God using other modalities and, and different ways to bring forth that healing. And I've looked at the 12 step program and some people who are in it and it's about forgiveness. It's about forgiving those, like literally the steps are find out people that you've hurt and apologize, allow them to forgive you. Like that thing is just dipped in forgiveness. It's the modality. There was also a uh, an interview that I heard with Joey Diaz and Mike Tyson. And one of the guys, it was Mike Tyson's uh, manager, I guess it is, or publicist. And he does the podcast with them. And he was talking about the relation to the 12-step program to a psychedelic experience, a psilocybin mushroom experience, that you it is something that is very introspective, that I need to look at myself. The Bible says to examine yourself to make sure that you're in the faith. It's something you do daily. But to examine yourself and make sure that you're not holding on to anything. The mushrooms are introspective. The teachers, they're going to make you look at yourself. Hey, man, why you ain't did this? You've been hiding it. A lot of times it, it will show, it makes you search yourself. You could do that yourself <laughs> or you'll be made to do it. The teachers will come and show you. They'll pull it up, stuff that you've been burying. You're like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I have to forgive my brother? Yeah, okay, I forgive him. No, I need to tell him. I need to get him up on the phone and tell him I forgive him and I love him. You know, and that I release him from that. He's still he's still holding on to that. So the just the similarities of, of, of the introspective journey, no matter how you get there, if it's through church, if it's just through you know what I'm saying? Uh, deep levels of prayer and, and, and intimacy. Like it comes up. I need to get to go to the next level. Got to get rid of this stuff. Do the work. You are your own worst enemy. And um, God's not holding back anything from you. Again, she says, she says something really beautiful and said that there's no such thing as time. Like, because even looking at the healing thing, like, okay, healing takes three weeks or healing takes this. Healing takes a lifetime. Like you're, you're going to continually walk it out. But instantly, there are things that I've I've been in in the past and, and really a lot of ideologies and belief systems and studying and stuff like that, that I thought that I can never go back, that I can never unlearn this, that I can never look at Christians the same way again because I know too much and I've maybe I've, I've been done wrong by too many of them and I've kind of got them figured out. I know how religion works. I know how uh, churches work, you know, and there's a bunch of weird stuff that goes on, uh, on, but, and some of it's true, but some of it was ailing me. Like I knew too much then it was hurting me because I would never partake with them. I could never be a friend of them, whatever the case is, right? It's crazy. But I remember going, uh, seeking God in prayer with a couple brothers and going into it, knowing it and just kind of, uh, asking God to take it away. Like, I just, I want to be pure. I want to be holy like you are, you know, I'll get anything out of me. That's not of you. And it's like, well, that, that understanding is not of you. So I gave it to God and then I confessed it to the brothers and said, look, y'all, I just, I need some help. I need prayer because I'm dealing with this and this, and I want to let it go. And we prayed and instantly that burden broke and that ideology went out the window instantly was supernaturally uh, released from my mind, from my auric field, it was gone. Something that I thought I was going to carry to the grave was instantly gone. Instantly. Because the scripture says that we confess our sins one to another so that we will find forgiveness. That if we confess our sins unto him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. There's nothing that he can't forgive. There's no failure that he cannot fix. There's no ailment that he can't heal. No character defect or character flaw that you can't lay down at the altar. So wherever you are, man, make sure that you make that altar. Make it a daily practice. It really like I can help you. I do private sessions with people, healing sessions, uh, helping them kind of identify those things in in their life. Um, Anna does too. There's so many people who are doing this. It, it, it is the the good work. A lot of people are doing it, um, but it has to be something that you come forward on upon your own volition. You come forward with your own free will and you give it to God. Free will is like the biggest, most beautiful thing because you choose to let it go. You have a right to, to own it. You could be offended. You could be upset. You can sit in judgment, 
but you identify and you choose upon your own free will. It's a free will offering. You offer it to God. Say, look, I feel this way, but I know that this is the truth. I don't feel like it today, but I'm going to give it to you. Whatever it is, man, and that we do, and God honors that. He really does. So, man, I know that spoke to somebody. I'm reading the comments. I can feel it in the spirit. I feel things breaking off of you. Don't pick it back up. Even in just in the dialogue of you just understanding it, this stuff is falling off as you come into an understanding. And even as I'm speaking, you're reminded of different things within your own life. That's God. That's not me. That's God. Do the work. And it's going to be more. It's going to be more intense. And it's going to be good. It's going to be hard. But it's beautiful. And it's part of it. It's part of your journey. Let go of what is good in order to receive what is great. Make sure that you're doing that inner work. It's so beautiful, man. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoy talking about healing. Like this is a healing podcast. The healing modalities that are in my music, they're in my meditations, they're in my private sessions, they're in my retreats. Like it's the whole healing and forgiveness accompanies it all. And that's what it's about. So, man, I hope you guys check it out. If you want to uh, support my work, check out the meditations, the music, all that stuff. You get access to all of it by becoming a patron, patreon.com backslash true seeker. Go check out all the stuff that I have to offer there. Um, also, again, speaking to the men's retreat, we have another one. Uh, we have two planned. One of them's already booked up, but April, uh, there's a weekend in April. I think it's the 18th, I believe. I don't know. I have to check it out, um, but it's on my website, truthseeker.com. If you want to go, I think it's April the 18th. Uh, truthseeker.com. You can uh, get tickets there. It's going to be a uh, a weekend with me in the wilderness, uh, seeking God, uh, a bunch of uh, friends. There's only uh, six seats available at this moment. Um, so I, just because of the, uh, the outreach that I had and the outcry for people wanting to do it, I had to open up something else. I mean, there were so many people. Well, I did the first one in January that I set and uh, I just got so many emails of people wanting to come. And I was like, there's just not enough space. So I, it may be something that I do quarterly. So we're going to do January. And now we're doing, we opened it up for April as well. So if you want to see, go to truthseeker.com. First come, first serve. Um, if you want to check that out. So, excuse me, make sure you check that out. Also, I'm doing uh, ad spaces on the podcast now. So if you have a book, if you have a healing service, if you have something that you want to get in front of a engaged community that is going to have something to offer. Like if you have something to offer and you want to tap into what we've created here, uh, hit me up, just go to truthseeker.com backslash advertise and you can get commercials and ad slots on the podcast too. It's got to be something like conducive to what we're doing. There's not going to be like a, you know, something that just makes no sense. Like if you have something that's, that can add to, the, the podcast and even if you want to be interviewed like we can talk about that as well but go to truthseeker.com click on advertise and uh, you'll be able to see what we have to offer I, I created this little commercial here or and uh it kind of talks about what we have going on for the outro so with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom thursday night school of the mystics check out our discord the community everything that we have to offer peace peace guys we'll do it again very soon peace have a book, product, or service you'd like to promote? Yeah. Look no further. Ad slots and commercials are now available for you to get the word out about what you do on the Truth Seeker Podcast. We give you what you need. Get it, get it. Engage the spiritual community and get yourself instantly in front of thousands of listeners who explore the spiritual, paranormal, supernatural, religious, and metaphysical realms. Have your commercial inserted into our entire archive of episodes. That includes the one with Jordan Maxwell, James Gilliland, Dr. Michael Heiser, and that weird one with Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Stop sleeping on yourself. Know your worth. Let's get the word out today about what you have to offer. Head on over to truthseeker.com and click on advertise for more info. Yo. That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.